Red Dead Online is now four years old, but despite this, there is still a loyal fan base behind it, built up with beginners as well as veteran players. And to help everyone out in this video, we are going to be going through 100 tips to dominate Red Dead Online. All the tips that we're going to be going through within this video will hopefully take you from first starting this game to eventually being rank 100 having hundreds of thousands of dollars as well as a sufficient amount of gold for you to purchase into any of the content that is available so starting off number one play through the red dead online stories this is the introduction to the game but more importantly you'll also get money as well as gold which will help you buy into some of those starter items and eventually build towards buying into a role speaking of roles number Number two, the first role that you should buy into should be the bounty hunter. It costs 15 gold bars, but it's the only role that will actively give gold. All roles link into daily challenges, but the bounty hunter is the only role that will actually give gold for every time that you bring in a bounty dead or alive. Number three, go through the blood money missions. They cost nothing to enter. You just need to go over to Saint Denis and start the cutscene. But after that, you will get access to blood money missions. Number four, avoid the prestigious bounty hunter right at the beginning. The license will allow you to unlock more content for the role, but it's not going to give you an increase on what you can get with payouts, as well as the content isn't that much different. You're better buying into other content elsewhere and then using a prestigious bounty hunter for the last thing that you buy into. Number five, visit every stranger on the map. You'll notice icons around the world. These are stranger missions. They're not particularly amazing, but when first starting out, they're okay. Number six, try not to overspend on items that you do not need at the beginning, such as clothes. There is a large catalog with customization options, and you want to avoid these right at the beginning because it has no impact on the amount of money or gold that you can earn within the future. Buy into activities and content which are entertaining and also is going to give you a better return. Similar to this, number seven, don't buy every weapon. There's no point buying into every single weapon which is available when you're only probably going to be using a couple of them for certain activities you should only be buying one of each type of weapon so at number eight the best shotgun is the semi-auto shotgun this has a high ammo capacity is very accurate and of course extremely powerful number nine the best rifle is the bolt action rifle there are some great customization options for this but more importantly you're able to use this on medium to large animals without damaging the meat. Number 10, the best sniper rifle is the Carcano rifle. It's not the most powerful rifle within the game, but it's pretty good when it comes to its fire rate, and that's making it very good when it comes to PvP. Number 11, the best repeater is the Lancaster repeater, and simply the most popular weapon within the game. Number 12, the best sidearm is the naval revolver. This weapon is perfect and does everything that you expect a revolver to do. At 13, you should be avoiding the elephant rifle. There's loads of people out there that would say that you should be using this to hunt down legendary animals, as it did come with the naturalist update, but it's more of a novelty more than anything else. There's better weapons, including the semi-auto shotgun for you to take down legendary animals if you choose to do so. And number 14, you should be purchasing an offhand holster. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, you just need to make sure that you have one because this will allow you to dual wield. Number 15, as a beginner, you should just deal with the current horse that you have. The stamina, the acceleration and the health are going to be awful. But with the current level that you're at right at the beginning, you're not going to be high enough to, in order for you to unlock any of the good horses and you're certainly not going to have the money. The best thing for you to do is build up 15 gold bars, buy into the bounty hunter, get to rank 20 within the bounty hunter and hopefully at that point you should have a decent amount of money where you're able to buy into the rank 20 Breton. Speaking of horses, point number 16, you need to start upgrading them and the best saddle to go for for is the Nakadosha saddle. It has a benefit with health as well as stamina, which will make your horse even better. Number 17, the best horse stirrups are the hooded stirrups. They're slightly more expensive, but you can clearly see the benefits. Number 18, make sure you get all your rolls to the maximum level. This of course is going to take some time, but by doing this, you will be able to get the most benefits. This includes all the skills and unlocks which are available. Number 19, learn the payout system within the game. Unfortunately, with Red Dead, the faster that you complete a mission, no matter what it is, the less money, gold and XP you'll be rewarded at the end. 
but the longer it takes, the more you're going to be able to get of these. So that means take your time when going through missions. Normally, I wait until the last 30 seconds before completing. Number 20. When going through the Bounty Hunter, try to complete the highest possible tier which is available to you. This is signified by the dollar symbols at the top. One dollar, tier one, two dollars, tier two, three dollars, tier three. Number 21. For you to get the maximum payout within the legendary bounties, you'll need to wait 30 minutes. But the good thing is that you can spend your time doing other activities such as hunting animals and storing them within your hunting wagon in order for you to make this time pass quickly. Number 22. Purchase the bounty hunter wagon. This is more for those that are looking to be solo players because in order for you to get the most money from the role, you really want to be going for the six man bounties and there's no way that you can put them on horseback. Number 23. Purchase the reinforced lasso. This will allow for enemies to be hogtied for a longer period of time. Now you can knock out enemies no matter what lasso that you're using but this will also count as them being dead when you hand them in even though they are just knocked out and you'll get the payment of them being alive. It's weird. It's a bit of a bug. Number 24. Have your moonshine shack located in bayou or tall trees. These two locations are decent areas and have the easiest delivery routes. Number 25. Complete the Moonshine Story missions. Not only are these the best missions within the game, but they also give out pretty decent XP and money. Number 26. Purchase the bar and band expansions for the Moonshine Shack. These expansions in themselves don't do anything too special, but you will have a number of daily challenges which are connected to them, so they pay for themselves in the long run, especially with the amount of gold that you're able to get. Number 27. Make sure you purchase both condenser upgrades for the Moonshine Roll. This will result in over $200 profit in every single delivery. Number 28. Always use the berry cobbler or apple berry crumb moonshine recipes as they're the easiest to make and as long as you set up the correct locations your supplies are everywhere around you. Number 29. Make sure you're always producing moonshine. It's not difficult to have the moonshine roll up and running. You just need to talk to Marcel and order moonshine mash. Now you just need to go back every 50 minutes to make sure that you are completing the delivery. Number 30. Hunt legendary animals for the trader roll. Don't try and get the normal animals within the world because they're not going to be adding too many materials. Legendary animals will add a lot more and they don't take that long. Use the naturalist to get these missions. Number 31. Always complete resupply missions. Never order supplies. Trader resupply missions will provide XP but will also give an extra 5 to 20 materials on top after completing. Number 32. Similar to the moonshiner, always have the trader running in the background. With this, you do need to do a mission as we've just mentioned, but once done, that's also going to be running in the background generating goods for the next 50 minutes. Number 33. Purchase the medium and large delivery wagons. These are necessary in order to make a high amount of profit with every single delivery that you do. Number 34. Always produce the maximum amount of goods available within a trader role. This will result in the most amount of revenue as possible. Number 35. Purchase the hunting wagon. This is unlocked at rank 10 of the trader role and can be used as a permanent storage for animals to later be delivered to cribs. Number 36. Donating skins won't give as much materials compared to full carcasses. Even if it's the exact same animal broken down into separate components, it's just not as much. Deliver full carcasses. Number 37. Purchase the stew pot. It may seem like a pointless purchase, but you will be able to restore your cores. Plus, on top of that, there is normally daily challenges which will provide gold for you completing certain types of stews. Number 38. Purchase the fast travel post at your camp. This will save a lot of time. You still need to pay for it, but a lot of time will be saved. Number 39. When hunting small animals, use varmint rifle to ensure the quality of the animal doesn't decrease. Number 40. When hunting larger animals, headshot them with a rifle to ensure that the quality stays the same. Number 41. When going through the collector role, don't buy collector maps. Instead, use the Jean Rope map to find all collectible locations. Number 42. Purchase the naturalist role last. There's not much money to be made within this role, so it's best to save it to last when you work on other activities. It's also not the most entertaining role. Number 43. Be sure to get samples from animals that you find in free roam. You don't need to do this all the time, but it certainly helps when first going through the naturalist because this is the way that you will get XP. Number 44. To rank up the naturalist role quickly, complete the poached animal missions and then go into the legendary animal missions. Number 45. On the weapon wheel, select a weapon of your choice as a quick select. This will allow you to quickly draw that weapon with just a hit of a button, making you be that much more efficient once you get into one-on-one -on -one conflict. Number 46. Always clean your weapons. This can be 
done with gun oil or at the gunsmith and can ensure that your weapon is dealing the most damage as possible. Number 47. Upgrade your weapons. Most weapons within Red Dead Online can be slightly improved. You need to go to the gunsmith and buy those upgrades. Number 48. Use the Paint It Black ability card. Most of the Dead Eye ability cards, they're not too great, but the Paint It Black one will allow you to paint targets on several enemies or several animals at once. Number 49. Remember to upgrade your ability cards. It can be expensive when going for it, so you don't want to do all of them, but once you're happy with the ability card selected, you should be upgrading them. Number 50. Aiming from the hip with your weapon will allow you to rapid fire. This comes in handy in close combat. Number 51. Be sure to complete your treasure maps. These can stack up over time, especially once you start to get to a higher rank where you just forget about them, but you will be able to unlock them every five levels once you reach level 10. Number 52, remember to reset your awards. Some of these awards can be reset 10 times and every time they will be able to give you 40 gold nuggets and some XP. There is one within the bounty hunter when you get 10,000 XP, which can be reset unlimited. There is no cap. Number 53, to quickly lose or gain honor, you can head over to Old Man Jones and pay free gold bars. Number 54, in the quick menu, you can select default horses for races, story missions, and free roam events. Number 55, to auto travel to a destination, set a waypoint and then enter cinematic mode. This will automatically take you to the location that you selected. Number 56, you can make sure nobody takes your horse by changing the access permissions in the quick menu. Number 57, you can make changes on customization options at a later day. For example, you can rename your horse at the stables anytime. Likewise, you can also change your character's appearance through customization within the quick menu. Number 58, you can change your outfit on your horse. Depending on the saddlebags, you can have up to seven outfits stored. Number 59, as you bond with your horses, you can perform tricks and your horse's stats will improve. The overall goal is to get it to level 4 bonding, which is the max. Number 60, calming your horse will increase your horse's stamina. Number 61, you can use Hair Primar to change your character's hairstyle. This is more for those that are looking for a few more character customization options. Number 62, by opening the player tab within the menus, you can see your player statistics. And there may be something wrong with your character, which is affecting one of their stats, which you didn't know about before. Number 63, certain outfits will make your character hot or cold, depending on the weather as well as location. Make sure that you have a variety of outfits for different weather conditions. Number 64, your cores won't drain when you're at your camp. So if you're in a position where you haven't got much money, so you can't buy into food and you're struggling with hunting, you could just go over to your camp and wait there for a bit. Not only will they not go down, but they'll also slowly regen. Number 65. NPCs will react to your remotes. They could either be nice reactions or bad reactions, and depending on the day, you may even have a daily challenge which requires you to do this. Number 66, don't purchase the lock breaker. It's used to break locks stealthily so you don't need to shoot them, but let's be real, just shooting them really isn't much of a problem. Number 67, it helps to purchase items from the handheld catalog, which will then be sent to your camp rather than you having to go to the closest store. Number 68, any items at the post office can be picked up from your camp lockbox or the post office. It doesn't need to be one or the other. Number 69. If you have GTA Online, you can get a free revolver. This is Larry's revolver. You will need to go to GTA Online to complete the slasher events. You will then need to kill 50 NPCs and then you can head into Red Dead Online where you can find Larry's revolver. Number 70. Do not purchase the pocket watch. This can be collected for free around the world and, well, it's a pointless purchase at the end of the day. Number 71. You can clear your bounty by going to the post office to pay it off or you can even just pay it off at your camp. Number 72. In the game's controller settings, turn on hold to reel for fishing. This will make fishing much easier as you don't need to use the analogs to go around in circles, you can just hold down the button. Number 73, don't worry about roll tokens. You will have the exact amount that are necessary to unlock everything within the game, so there's no choice. Number 74, if you bought into way too many weapons, purchase the weapon locker. This will remove weapons from your horse as you store them at your camp. Number 75, if your hat falls off, you can put it back on through the weapon wheel when you're on your horse. Number 76, you can play with friends by forming a posse, but when you go into certain missions, they'll only allow for four people, not the maximum of seven. 
Going off this, number 77, legendary bounty missions will only allow you to have four people. And this makes life a hell of a lot easier, especially considering legendary bounties increase in difficulty every single time that you complete them. Number 78, standard bounties will allow you to have seven people as the maximum amount of players. So the maximum amount of people that are part of your posse. And this makes life incredibly easy because the highest amount of bounties that you can get at one time is six. So not only will there be more than enough for one bounty to go on back of one horse, but you also have one other player left over. Number 79, be sure to loot as much as you can, whether that be buildings or bodies. More often than not, some tonics will be around there and you can get some very expensive items with collectibles being part of it. Once you complete a collector set, well, you're gonna be getting a decent amount. Number 80, instead of spamming an item in the catalog to purchase it multiple times, hold down the button to use the purchase and it will purchase the maximum amount available. Number 81, if someone catches you with a lasso, open a weapon wheel and equip your knife and this will instantly let you free. Number 82, during PvP, don't stand still as this will make your position completely visible to all players. If you are gonna stand still, make sure that it's behind cover where no one can see you, where you can give them a surprise attack once they get close enough. Number 83, during horse races, PvP is enabled, which means you need to be careful, but also use it to your advantage. As a bonus tip, don't try and shoot the player, try to shoot the horse. Much bigger target and it's easier to take them down. Number 84. If you're going to be going through horse races, the best thing that you can do is stay back. At least until the end. Very similar to GTA Online where catch up is available. Red Dead Online has the exact same thing, but Red Dead doesn't have the ability to turn this off. So with every single race that you go through, it's always going to be the same. This means for the majority of the race, the worst thing that you can do is be first until the last leg. Number 85, if an outlaw pass is active, you can wait until you complete the free pass in order for you to then buy into the premium version. The ranks are exactly the same and they're going to cross. You don't need to go all the way to the maximum rank again. Number 86, once you hit character rank 100, there's no need for XP anymore. You'll need roll XP to progress through those, but after that, it becomes pointless. Number 87, never purchase gold bars. Rockstar does make Red Dead a bit of a grind so that they can sort of nudge you into buying gold bars, but it's a complete waste of your hard earned cash. There are a lot of activities within game that will give you gold. You just need to dedicate time to them. Number 88, if you can find jewelry within the world, you can sell it at the fence. And some of this jewelry can go for a decent amount. Number 89, you can drag an animal with your lasso and it won't decrease in quality. This means that you can transport two carcasses with your horse. Number 90, if you leave a session with animals on your horse, they will despawn. You will not get them again. They've completely gone. This is why you need to get that hunting wagon because what you chuck in the back will be saved and saved until you remove it. Number 91, to temporary hogtie an enemy from range, use a bolus. This will take down an enemy for about 15 seconds and in that time you can run over and fully hogtie them. Number 92, hunting will increase your honor. This includes skinning animals and is one of the easiest ways in order for you to build it. Number 93, take advantage of NPC campfires. They are placed within the world. They don't cost anything to set up as they're from NPCs, but you can still use them for crafting and cooking. Number 94, never trade a single collectible. Do not go through them individually. The best thing for you to do is to complete the full set. Once you sell that set, you'll get more money and also it's the only way that you can get XP through selling collectibles. Number 95, you should avoid purchases that are not going to give you a return, whether that be through money, gold, XP, or even an entertainment. For 90% of the items available within the game, you don't need them. For example, you don't need to buy into the advanced camera. This is great for those that like photography, but for most people, they don't. So you can save yourself the money and use that elsewhere. Number 96, posse members won't receive as high of a payout from missions as the posse leader, and you can't change this. You can't change the splits between each member of the posse. So the best thing that you can do to keep everyone split equal is to keep changing posses between your friends group. 
Number 97, posse members can partake in missions for roles that they don't own. So if you have a friend that has only just started and they want to earn some gold, the best thing that you can do is start a posse as the posse leader and invite them to legendary bounties or tier 3 bounties. That way you're able to get gold from them and they can start building up their gold to eventually buy into the roles that they need. Number 98, never hunt with a shotgun unless it's a legendary animal. Every animal has a three star system and it's random what they spawn in as, but if you take multiple shots at an animal, that star system will instantly go down to one, which means it's the worst available. But with legendary animals, it doesn't matter. They just have an overall health. They don't have the three star system. So by using a shotgun on them, you're able to take down that health a lot quicker than if you used any other type of weapon. But with that said, don't take this to the extreme, and this is number 99. Don't use anything with fire, anything that's explosive, or anything such as an incinerary round. This will degrade the quality of the animal, and if it's a legendary animal, it will just take it away from you. You will not have the ability to skin it, pick it up, or anything. It's just gone. And number 100, make sure that you're always checking the current monthly bonuses and discounts in order for you to maximize the profit and purchase certain items which are discounted. Even though this is not the content that most people want, it will make life a hell of a lot more easier for you as a beginner. You will be able to get things at a much better price which will put you in a better position within the long run. But here you go, here are 100 tips to help you dominate within Red Dead Online. As a beginner, this really should help you get going. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to start Red Dead Online, then make sure that you click the video which is now on screen. But before you do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Okay, now that that's done, you are ready to click that video.